everyone. This is Jeff Rumberg. I'm a managing partner with MetricNet. And today we're going to discuss a metric called mean time to resolve. It's also referred to as MTTR. And it applies to both desktop support and field service organizations. Let's start with a broad list of the most common metrics for desktop support. Shown here on page two are 26 of the most common metrics for both desktop support and field services. We've organized them into six categories. We have cost metrics and quality metrics, productivity and technician metrics, service level, and ticket handling metrics. Now this is not an all-inclusive list. There are literally hundreds of metrics for both desktop support and field services. But these are the most important metrics, the ones we see most often, and they are also the metrics that we use when we benchmark a desktop support or a field services organization. Now, it turns out that there's an 80-20 rule when it comes to the metrics of desktop support and field services, and the metrics I've highlighted here on slide three are the ones that really matter. These are the most important metrics, and you can manage a desktop support activity or a field services function very effectively with the metrics I've highlighted here. They include cost per ticket, percent resolved, level one capable, which is the percentage of tickets resolved by desktop support or field services that could have and should have been resolved at level one. It's a TCO metric. We also include customer satisfaction and first contact resolution rate. FCR, by the way, applies only to incidents, not service requests. We have technician utilization, which drives our cost per ticket. We have technician job satisfaction, which has a secondary effect on just about every other metric in desktop support and field services. And then we have two important service level metrics, MTTR for incidents and mean time to fulfill service requests. So although MTTR refers to both incidents and service requests, the common vernacular for incidents is mean time to resolve, and the common vernacular for service requests is mean time to fulfill the service request. So let's talk specifically now about MTTR. That's really the focus of this video, is mean time to resolve. So let's start by defining it. Here on page five, I'm defining MTTR for incidents, and on page six, I define MTTR for service requests. Now, mean time to resolve for incidents is usually measured in business hours, not clock hours. Roughly 80% of desktop support organizations and field service organizations are going to measure incident MTTR in business hours. So if I open a ticket at noon on a Monday and close it at noon on a Tuesday the next day, that's considered eight business hours, even though it was 24 elapsed hours or 24 clock hours. Now for service requests, typically we're looking at days, not hours, because service requests generally take longer to fulfill than it takes to resolve an incident. And once again, most organizations look at business days, not elapsed days. So if I open a service request at noon on a Friday and close it at noon on the following Tuesday, that looks like four elapsed days, but it's really just two business days. So there is no right or wrong answer here, but the common approach is to measure mean time to resolve incidents in business hours. So 24 clock hours is typically eight business hours. And the common approach for service requests is to look at business days rather than elapsed days. Now, I also wanna point out that MTTR mean time to resolve is different than the work time associated with a ticket. You might open a ticket at noon on a Monday and close it at noon on a Tuesday, thereby you have eight business hours for that particular incident, but you may have only worked on the ticket for 15 minutes or 30 minutes. There's a big difference between MTTR and work time, so I wanna make that distinction. The work time on a ticket is always less than or equal to the mean time to resolve. MTTR is also sometimes called cycle time. 
Let's now move on to the cause and effect relationships for the most common desktop support and field services metrics. We start with our foundation metrics of cost per ticket and customer satisfaction. They are driven respectively by technician utilization and first contact resolution. Again, FCR when it comes to desktop support and field services is applied only to incidents, not to service requests. So when we put this cause and effect diagram together, what you see is an ecosystem for the most common metrics in desktop support and field services. And we see here that our service levels, mean time to resolve, have a significant impact on customer satisfaction. But we also know that service levels, if they get too aggressive, they can drive down your utilization, which in turn drives up your cost per ticket. So service levels can help you with your customer satisfaction. But again, if you get too aggressive, they're going to hurt you on technician utilization, which will drive up your cost per ticket. Let's look at some of the correlations between mean time to resolve incidents and customer satisfaction and mean time to fulfill service requests and customer satisfaction. What I'm showing on page eight is a set of data from MetricNet's benchmarks. On the x-axis, we're showing MTTR in business hours for incidents. And on the y-axis, we're showing customer satisfaction. We can clearly see the correlation here. The red line represents the linear regression through this set of data. Moreover, we know that this isn't just spurious correlation. We know this is cause and effect. We can measure the cause and effect using a statistic called uh, the Granger test, which tells us that incident MTTR is driving customer satisfaction. It isn't just a spurious correlation. So we can clearly see that as incident MTTR increases, the customer satisfaction goes down, which is why you want to keep your MTTR low without driving up your cost. If we look now at the mean time to fulfill service requests in business days on page nine here. Again, this is for service requests. The x-axis represents business days. The y-axis represents customer satisfaction. We see a very similar correlation with incident mean time to resolve versus customer satisfaction. The red line represents the linear regression through the data points. And once again, this isn't just spurious correlation. This is cause and effect. So once again, it behooves any desktop support or field service organization to keep their service request mean time to fulfill or MTTR as low as possible without driving up costs so that you can maximize customer satisfaction. Now, to give you some benchmarking statistics, these are global statistics from all over the world. The average mean time to resolve incidents in business hours is a little more than six hours. The average mean time to fulfill service requests in business days is almost five days. But the ranges are quite broad. The low, the minimum on mean time to resolve incidents is less than a half hour. It's about a third of an hour, a little over 20 minutes. The maximum is about 33 business hours. That's uh, quite long. That's more than three business days. And then we have, for service requests, uh, we have a range of 1.1 business days all the way up to 11.2 business days. So this will give you some guidance in terms of establishing your own performance targets for MTTR in, for incidents and mean time to fulfill service requests. Let me put this in a broader context. We've been discussing mean time to resolve for incidents and mean time to fulfill for service requests, but these metrics operate in that broader ecosystem that I showed you earlier, those 26 common metrics for desktop support and field services. To really get a handle on how you're performing in the aggregate, MTTR is just one piece of the equation. You really need to be looking more broadly at your overall performance. And the best way to do that is through benchmarking. Uh, many of you are familiar with the concept of benchmarking. It essentially involves comparing your performance in desktop support or field services to a valid external peer group. You identify performance gaps and you diagnose those gaps and then you selectively adopt and adapt best practices that enable you to close or mitigate those negative performance gaps. You see, most improvement initiatives in IT service and support take place incrementally through 
trial and error, which is why so few support organizations ever achieve world-class performance. But what benchmarking allows you to do is build upon the proven best practices of the industry's best performers, leapfrog ahead of all the trials and tribulations associated with incremental trial and error improvement, and improve your performance not at an evolutionary pace, but rather at a revolutionary pace. So instead of achieving world-class performance in years or never, you can get there in weeks or months. And we've been able to establish empirically that there is a, an approximate one-to-one -one correspondence between benchmarking and world-class performance, meaning that those support organizations that operate at a world-class level are benchmarking on an annual basis and we can look at it the other way and say that those that are benchmarking on an annual basis are the ones that achieve world-class performance. Uh, unfortunately, fewer than 20% of all IT support organizations engage in annual benchmarking. And I would encourage you to consider this because benchmarking is the single most effective tool to help you rapidly close negative or mitigate negative performance gaps and achieve world-class performance. It doesn't cost a lot of money, nor does it take a lot of time, but it does allow you to rapidly accelerate your continuous improvement and ultimately achieve world-class performance. If you're interested in getting more information about benchmarking or mean time to resolve or any of the metrics that showed up in this set of slides, I would encourage you to give us a phone call. You can see our main phone number right here, or you can email us at info at metricnet.com. You can also visit us at our website, metricnet.com, and you'll find plenty of information there that you can download that enables you to improve your IT service and support performance. Thanks for joining me today for our discussion of Mean Time to Resolve. This is Jeff Rumberg, Managing Partner of MetricNet.